Hi everyone, my, my name is uh, Luis Fernandez. I'm a principal consultant at uh, Bentley Systems for the Water Infrastructure uh, Digital Cities Department. Uh, I've been working in the development of open flows flood and related products for the last 18 years and today I'll, I'll talk about Bentley's open flow flood solution for flood modeling. So I'll, I'll start by giving a quick overview and about uh, how to create a new project and, and how to create uh, flood sim simulation scenarios and then give a brief uh, introduction on, on the flood model results visualization and integration with other Bentley uh, solutions and, and, and mainly around the workflow. Then I'll, I'll cover some, I'll present some user stories and case studies uh, specifically for the city of, of Lisbon and their new drainage uh, master, uh, master plan and also applications for flood risk mapping uh, for critical areas in Portugal and also for climate change adaptation plans in the, in the south of Portugal. And then I'll give you some other examples of other applications that you can do with, with, with open flows flood and, and hopefully give you uh, a good overview of uh, what this solution can bring. So Bentley Open Flows Flood is a complete flood modeling software for uh, understanding and mitigating flood risks either in urban or river or coastal systems. It's a desktop application. Uh, it's a graphical user interface where you can set up um, uh, numerical uh, models and configure this, these models. Then you can explore and measure, manage different scenarios where you can, you can uh, test out uh, different solutions. You can bring all the data uh, required onto this uh, desktop application and visualize the, the model results once you finish the simulation. Then there's a series of tools and plugins that, you can, that can help you prepare all the information. Uh, the, the software itself has a, a built-in GIS system, so you can load your georeference uh, data. You can prepare the simulations, run the models, uh, visualize the results, and then um, uh, help help with with this uh, model uh, results help you solve the, the flood modeling problems that you want to solve. So, in terms of a plan, the idea for for open for Bentley's open flows flood is. Uh, you create a model, you create a, a flood digital twin, so you can simulate and assess various flood risk scenarios for your for your area of interest. With with it, you can accurately map the flood extent, and based on the on on the the results of the of these model simulations, you can cross this with existing infrastructure uh, 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 data and calculate flood flooding risks. From there, you can identify which are what areas are the most prone to, to flooding or more critical to flooding. You can uh, help uh, develop and design mitigation strategies and then implement those uh, mitigation measures in, in the software and then assess uh, or reassess the, the, with model simulations the, these mitigation scenarios and if they are effective or not. Once, once you have that, you can, uh, you can, after you design them and see if they are effective, you can implement them on on uh, on the on the terrain with building new infrastructure, and then you have all the information and all the knowledge how f how the flood occurs in your uh, area of interest, and then you you can help prepare and be prepared in case of a flood uh, event. In terms of the workflow, and and we typically start from a digital terrain model, so we we need information about the terrain. So we want to, to model how the water uh, from a rainfall event or extreme rainfall event or from snow melt or from a uh, rupture dam or levee or rupture pipe or, um, or from a coastal storm or even a tsunami. So whatever causes the flood, we, we need the information about the digital terrain, uh, the, the, the digital terrain model. And we can use... Uh, for very accurate, um, uh, using we can use very accurate data uh, based on solutions provided by Bentley. So, using photos and, uh, and lidar images, we can uh, using Bentley solutions like context capture build a 3D uh, reality model, where you can have a very extremely detailed um, uh, model of a city or, or a any region, an industrial area, or or even a floodplain. Um, 
and then we can bring this information onto open flows flood uh, directly and we can identify where are the buildings where are the streets the pavements uh, the green areas uh, uh, trees etc and then from there build build information in open flows flood perform um, numerical simulations of the flood for different scenarios, for uh, precipitation scenarios, uh, ruptured pipes, ruptured dams or levees, etc. And then together with other Bentley solutions like LuminarT or Open Cities Planner or even we can bring it directly to uh, flood early warning systems that, that will uh, be uh, coming soon uh, in the Bentley portfolio, we can visualize and we can uh, expose this information that we build with the numerical simulations. We can uh, present them to the to the stakeholders, to the uh, to the uh, general public. We can present them in a straightforward uh, and way, uh, and we can combine information that was produced by Open Force Flood with other softwares, other tools, to 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 be able to uh, to derive flood risk mapping and 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 reach information about. Uh, um, flooding. So in terms of the workflow, I can start, if I start from a, a context capture uh, 3D reality model, for example, we see here the city, a, 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 a part of the city of Paris, and we can bring this uh, highly detailed uh, digital terrain model up to open flows flood. We can create simulations, and we see here, for example, an extreme flood event in Paris where the river Seine is is uh, uh, overflowing on the margins and flooding uh, the streets, and then we can uh, visualize this in 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 two D, but also in three D with the reality model. Uh, we can combine the flood model results together with the um, with the um, with the three D reality uh, model. The video is a bit uh, uh, lagging, but we can see the flooding on the streets. And we can we can have, see in very detailed uh, in an in a immersive way we can uh, uh, look at the at how the flood proper, uh, flood wave uh, propagates what areas are are going to be flooded so we can even see if at my doorstep is going to be flooded and how is it going to look if it, if I'm uh, if there's a flood event so I can we can be able to communicate in a very uh, straightforward way and realistic way with the general public and with the stakeholders and decision makers. In terms of uh, applications that you, you can do with open flows flood, we can apply it for urban flooding, so to understand the flood extent in a city and, and help us, uh, open flows flood can help us identify the bottlenecks and also uh, the insufficient capacity of the storm water systems. And then we can help prioritize mitigation measures and use uh, low impact development strategies or green initiatives and also uh, climate change uh, scenarios. Additionally, we can, we can use uh, open force flood for riverine flooding uh, where we can also ac assess the flood extent of, of the of a, a floodplain. We can assess river conveyance capacity and, and the infrastructure resilience in build up areas. Where, and then we can help dimension uh, and, uh, and improve the emergency structures and protection structures. We can also do some sediment transport and water quality in the rivers. So we can help also uh, understand the impacts of flooding in, in, in these systems and then also uh, assess the land use strategies in risk areas. So if we change the land use, can, can this improve our, our uh, uh, flood resilience? Uh, open flow flood is also a, it's a complete flood modeling software it can address also coastal flooding like storm surges so we can also assess the flood extent risk and hazard maps and we can do it due to storm surging so for coastal uh, storms from the sea level so sea, uh, sea level um, uh, uh, rise due to due to a storm to due, due to low low pressure systems winds and waves so we can help dimension also uh, and improve coastal defenses and, and protection uh, infrastructures, and we can also use it as uh, in, in climate change scenarios. We can also use it as, a, as for tsunami uh, flooding, uh, flooding caused by tsunamis, where we can assess 
the the wave run up and, in, and make some scenarios on on uh, related with the tsunami uh, flood. In terms of data requirements, uh, we need so as I mentioned before, we need a digital terrain model, and and this we can bring information uh, from GIS systems. So we can bring in information in X Y Z formats or raster or shapefile formats. Uh, we, depending on the type of application, if it's more urban or coastal or river flooding or all of them, we may need some river bathymetry, uh, some cross sections data. Uh, there's different formats that we can handle. We'll need land cover use, so uh, if there's what kind of use the, the land has, if it's agriculture, if it's forest, if there's buildings, roads, pavements, uh, trees, etc. Uh, and, and then also uh, information about soil data, so if you want to, to in greater detail simulate infiltration. We also for groundwater, if, if, we, if it's required to, to simulate the uh, the, the groundwater, so we can bring all this information also from raster and shapefile formats. For precipitation and meteorology, we can uh, uh, define our own uh, scenarios or bringing information from meteorological sta uh, stations, uh, and and also from if if you if you if you want to do some reanalysis, we can bring in meteorological model data or, um, or meteorological model results or even from meteorological databases or climate databases. Um, if, we are, if we are in a urban environment, we will need also to take into account the storm and s or storm sewer networks and we can do this by coupling with other Bentley technology like sewer jams or civil storm. We can also bring in uh, uh, networks from uh, the SWIM model, EPA SWIM. And if we are in a coastal environment, either we can simulate it explicitly at the sea level, or we, we can bring it from other uh, information, from tidal gauges, uh, uh, or buoys, or, or other models. In terms of the implementation, so if I want, for example, to build a urban flood simulation in, in the city of Paris, like the one I showed uh, uh, in the beginning, so we see here the water column uh, height in flooding the streets so the, there's a high river flow then the, the river the river bursts through its margins and floods the, the streets including this uh, island here the island of Notre Dame if we if we want to do this so we can we have to, to bring information from um, uh, from for the digital terrain model and in, in this case specifically we bring information we import data from context capture we uh, we com construct a computational grid, so where we will define the computational grid size and the number of grid cells that we want to, and the area of simulation that we want to, to simulate. Then from there we create a, our own digital terrain model with the desired resolution. We can add more information in our built-in GIS system with overlaying some additional information with uh, buildings and land use, etc. Then we can define some boundary conditions. It can be precipitation or river flows. And then we can run the simul model simulations and view the results in form of uh, animated map. So we can see the uh, parameters like velocity, water column height, flows, uh, uh, etc. And we can display them, uh, uh, the, this information in very detail. We can zoom in and out and see the the results in very detail, and if we, if we want to look at one specific location, then we can we can look also at uh, uh, time series graphics for for specific locations. If we want to do some flood risk assessment and mitigation, so we can we can define different scenarios. For example, we see here uh, we can and we can compare them directly. We see here simulation. Um, on the left with a low uh, river flow where only there's uh, limited flooding on the margins of the river and then on the right hand side we see uh, extreme river flow and extreme flooding on the streets and we can directly uh, run the two simulations and compare side by side the two or more simulations we can uh, Using the model results, we can the model simulation results. We can analyze, for example, the losses of the buildings. So we can 
um, use the information from the uh, water uh, water elevations uh, in in the streets and uh, and uh, intersect that information with the buildings information and if we have information on uh, the the property value for for the, these buildings we can estimate uh, very quickly the the losses that are derived from this flood modeling scenario additionally we can after we run these simulation scenarios, we can also implement mitigation measures. And for example, we have built-in tools that can help, for example, prepare, uh, uh, prepare a model, a model scenario where we build around, around the islands, in, in the middle of the river, around the islands, we can build a protection wall or a dike. And, and then we can rerun the simulation and compare it. Uh, so on the left, we see with no mitigation measures and on the right with the with the with the flood protection wall or dike in in the in the islands and we see that on the left hand side we have ex extreme flooding on all, most most uh, all the the streets and roads on the on the islands and on the right hand side with the with the dike we don't have so flooding so I'll show it again so on the on the left hand side we don't we don't have we have the flooding on the on the islands on the right-hand side with a wall, with a protection wall, we don't have uh, flooding. And then from there we can, again, estimate the, the losses and we can compare scenarios and, for example, we can estimate if we build a, a dike around the, or a wall around the, the island, how much, how much this, will this solution cost and we can compare it with how much we uh, don't lose by having those uh, buildings flooded. So we can compare uh, scenarios and and options, and then we can we can uh, decide and or help to decide uh, which mitigation measure is better to implement. The other features that we can do with open post flood. So if we if we talk about it, if we want to simulate the flood model at the watershed scale, so instead of a, a limited area in a city or or in an urban environment, we can uh, also so we can simulate different scales, and to, to do that, we can uh, deal in, we have tools to delineate uh, the watershed and the natural drainage network. So we see here a video where uh, uh, the, the drainage, we can construct the drainage, uh, the natural drainage network based on the uh, digital terrain model uh, slopes, and we can create, we can give it a bit uh, more more detail. So if we if we change it, the threshold area here as we were seeing, we can create, delineate the, the watershed uh, uh, at any point of the, of, the, of the watershed. So we can define the outlet of the watershed and we can do it as a sub-catchment or at, for the entire catchment if, if we de define the outlet near the coastal area or in this case the estuarine area. So we see here the, drain the natural drainage network and the basin or the watershed delineation uh, in open flow slot. And then from there we can uh, run a watershed m model and we can identify uh, areas that are uh, in the floodplain that are prone to flooding and, and then if, if create also uh, boundary conditions for higher resolution models for the, the city, uh, for the urban environment uh, or, or any bottleneck that we identify from these large scale results. Additionally, we can we can couple open flow flood with 1D stormwater uh, models like um, sewer gems, and we see here, for example, uh, an example for a sewer gems uh, network where we can, for example, prescribe uh, define some uh, properties for each um, manhole and some inflows, and then we can use directly use the, the 1D stormwater model. Um, constructed in sewer gems with uh, and load it onto uh, open flow flood. Then we just need to prepare open flow flood to run uh, to the overland uh, uh, flow uh, simulation, load the sewer gems model, and then run it coupled uh, in in in, uh, in runtime. And then we have we can see here the drainage network. So we can see here the stormwater network. And then we can expect from those inflows that we defined in sewer gems, we can expect overflow in the manholes 
and then flooding on the streets. Finally, we can also uh, couple, uh, so the, the, the numerical engines in OpenFlow's flood, they can handle 1D, 2D uh, um, river floodplain um, modeling. So if, if we want, we can simulate a river uh, in, in, in great detail in a, with using a 1D model. And for that, we need some cross-section data for the, the river bathymetry. And then if, if we want to simulate how that, uh, if we want to simulate the river hydraulics and how the, the flood prop, um, uh, in, impacts on the floodplain, we can run the, the, the 1D, 2D models uh, at the same time, and, uh, and we can uh, define the, the horizontal re resolution of the, the 1D model. And so so the, the communication between the two domains are, is, is uh, better. And then we can uh, so run the, the river in 1D if there's if the river overflows on the margins, we can have flooding on the 2D uh, floodplain. And we see here uh, an animation of exactly of, of that. So on, on the right-hand side, we see the river flow. We have a very high river flow. And then we see, sorry, we have a very high river flow. And we see the, the river overtopping uh, and flooding the floodplain. So I'll cover some uh, user stories. So first, I'll talk about the new drainage master plan for, for Lisbon in Portugal. So Lisbon is capital of Portugal. Uh, it's the, the metro area has around 2.5 million people. The downtown part has uh, half a million people. Uh, it, it's prone to flooding in the downtown part area. So we, uh, the, 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 the drainage master plan for the city was reviewed in, in the last years to help address uh, some recurring flooding problems in, in, in some areas. So we built a 2D uh, overland flow model for, for the downtown watershed. Um, and we used uh, only the, the primary uh, stormwater network with a, using a 1D model uh, for that. And we coupled both. So using the digital terrain model for, for the city, we included data from the buildings, streets, roads, pavements. We also uh, constructed information on soil impermeability, so where's, where there's roads, there's no infiltration. Where there's green spaces, there's some infiltration. Uh, we also uh, the same with the buildings and, and et cetera. So we built an impermeabilization uh, map. And then we, asked, we, we ran several scenarios for precipitation for different return periods and also for a uh, a real case scenario of the 2008 flood. We also took into account uh, tide uh, level because Lisbon is a coastal si si uh, city, so we need to we, we took into account uh, the average level, the level at high tide, and also some climate change scenarios. So because this will will impact on the on the on the outfalls. So if if, if we are at high tide or if there's a storm surge, then the stormwater capacity is uh, hindered by the by the tide. We took into, into account some different, uh, the initial state of the soil, if it was dry, if it was a, a medium or saturated. And also we, we, we did some scenarios with the inlet efficiency. So, so some, sometimes uh, the inlets are not, uh, um, uh, they may be covered or, or not working properly. So we made some uh, scenarios with that. So, we see here some model simulations. On the right top, we see the 1D stormwater network. And then on the left-hand side, we see the 2D surface runoff. And we see that in, this, in the city center, we see uh, this yellow area, yellow-red. It's, it's an area where there's flooding. And so if we look in more detail for a specific scenario, we see that this area here is very prone to flooding. If we look in, into more detail and we do some validation, so for specifically this area, this is the city's main square, so it's a very touristic uh, area with thousands of visitors every day. Uh, so if there's a flood event, it's, a, it's an important um, uh, area. So uh, for the 2008 flood event, 
we compared the model results and we can see here that on the, a photo taken, taken from this building looking into this street here and we see that the model is able to reproduce the flood levels. A, a, a photo taken, taken from this building onto the main square and we see the National Theatre also flooded. And then the rest of the square we see that there's an area which where is the south southwest area is not flooded and uh, and we see that from the picture from that event and the comparison with the model result we see that the model is able to reproduce that so we, we were we were um, uh, convinced that the, the, um, the model is able to reproduce the reality uh, uh, flood levels so we were able to do some scenarios for and propose some solutions on how to solve this this um, uh, this problem. So what we see here on the left hand side is the reference situation and on the right hand side is the proposed solution where we propose to build an intercepting tunnel which will intercept water from this uh, main uh, uh, pipe and the second main pipe here. This, these are actually two uh, st streams or two uh, rivers that uh, are uh, piped. They, they grow onto an underground conduit and the proposed solution was to build an intercepting pipe that would collect water from uh, upstream and then in this area here and then discharge it onto the on the Tagos estuary in, in the coastal area and this solution was approved and it's now being un it's now under, under construction in uh, almost 200 million euro uh, 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 project other project, other uh, success stories for uh, open flow flood was uh, for the Portuguese Environmental Agency. Uh, the open flow flood was used for flood risk mapping of 26 critical areas, where we perform um, uh, different simulation scenarios for these 26 areas with different return periods. Uh, we calculated uh, maximum water column uh, and the velocity at the maximum water column and the, uh, the the maximum flood extent. So the flood is not static; it's something that's dynamic. So we we, we uh, cal calculated these um, parameters, and from there also uh, directly calculated in flood the flood hazard. So which is a combination of the the velocity and the, the water column height. And from there, this this information was used by the Portuguese Environmental Agency to uh, together crossing this, inform cross, uh, inf uh, crossing this information with infrastructure, um, uh, uh, they were able to estimate the flood risk for these 26 critical uh, areas. This is part of a European Union uh, directive for flooding and this is, uh, this is to be reviewed uh, uh, peri periodically. Additionally, we did uh, also some we use flood, uh, open flow flood for flood risk uh, mapping in a climate change, climate change adaptation uh, project in the south of Portugal, uh, where projection, where climate projections show that, that there's an increased frequency of uh, extreme rainfall events, uh, and there's an increase of uh, inundated areas or flooded areas, and there's an increase of the flood water levels. So we we, we analyzed seven different uh, critical areas. In, in this in this in this region, and uh, we are able to estimate for uh, for different return period scenarios using the the, um, the climate change projections until 2000 until 2100. Um, uh, we we build the scenarios, and we are able to identify critical areas that will be uh, impacted in in the in the in the future uh, decades to come. So, in terms, just to finish, I'll just go over some other examples so we can make this uh, make um, model flood model uh, scenarios using more complex applications. So, we can use we can do applications. For example, uh, here also another one for, for a region close to, to Lisbon, where we have a river high river flows, the tide coming in from the uh, the estuary. We have a, a, a small uh, watershed. Uh, uh, urban watershed. There's a uh, underground conduit uh, 
flowing in, into this, uh, un under the airport and flowing into this uh, watershed. There's some uh, retention ponds. There's an underground conduit with a, with a culvert. And we, the downtown part of the, this town part, this part of the city is recurrently flooded. Uh, so we're able to also to reproduce this. And specifically, we are able to reproduce that this underground conduit is not doesn't have enough uh, capacity. So there's uh, uh, the the water flowing from this stream or river uh, floods onto the streets under the highway and onto the downtown part of the the city. And then in the downtown part, we are able to reproduce the flood flood levels. So we see here this uh, red line, uh, dotted line. We can see it here overlapping with the model results. And again here, if we see this building for reference, we can also, uh, we're able to reproduce this uh, uh, flood event. So to finish, so Bentley Open Flow Flood is a complete flood model uh, software. Um, it has direct integration with other Bentley solutions, specifically with context capture, 3D reality models, so we can build high resolution, high quality digital drain models. And this is a, a, a strong point for, for the software because the digital terrain model quality is, uh, uh, is where the flood model results are more dependent. So the best, if we have a better quality of the digital terrain models, the better representation of reality in, in terms of the flood uh, extent uh, simulation. Uh, the better they, they are. We can integrate also with other uh, open flow solutions, specifically with sewer jams, civil storm. And then we can present the results uh, in, in, uh, with very high detail and very uh, simple, or not, not simple, but very realistic uh, representation. So we're using, for example, uh, Lumen RT. And also we can uh, uh, export the flood model results to Open Cities Planner or Open Cities Map, where we can have a 3D web visualization or just an integration of the model results for cross, uh, crossing this information with other uh, GIS data uh, and, and use it for uh, planning. And in the near future, we can expect uh, some in, uh, the integration with the flood, for flood early warning system. Thank you very much for your, for your time.